It seems like over the last 15 years, more or less every Chinese automaker has declared their intention to enter the U.S. market. Generally speaking, these plans don't amount to much more than writing a press release with a vague timeline and then staying very quiet when that timeline comes and goes. Now, there are a few automakers that have taken the endeavor a little bit more seriously. None more so than Trump Chi. That is why I'm very excited to get a go in this Trump Chi GA8 and find out what, if anything, we Americans might be missing out on. To be fair, Trump Chi was pretty forward about the fact that their planned push into the American market will be built around their SUV lineup, particularly the GS8 full-size SUV. But I think this, their flagship sedan, can give a pretty good idea of what they can offer in terms of design and quality. Speaking of design, let's start by having a look at the exterior styling of the GA8. This is the second generation GA8 sedan, and like so many other Chinese models, it is a stunning improvement over its predecessor. Designed by Mercedes-Benz alum Fan Zhang, the GA8 is a thoroughly modern design, particularly on the front end here with its LED headlights and massive grille. Rear design is also quite attractive, including the chrome exhaust outlets down here and the handsome LED rear tail lights. While we're back here, we might as well take the opportunity to talk about the name Trump Chi. Executives from Trump Chi declared as early as 2015 that they planned on changing the name of the company before entering the American market because it had become too politically charged. Something tells me they haven't changed their minds about that in the past five years. You may also be wondering about the Chi badge here. A Trump Chi is actually a brand built by a company called Guangxi Automotive, hence the G logo. I don't think that exterior design is where the GA8 shines, however. That happens when you take a seat inside. The interior is lovely. Easily one of the best I've seen from any Chinese brand. Sure, the dual screen infotainment setup on this higher trim model is heavily cribbed from Mercedes-Benz, as is this row of silver buttons down here. But if you're going to steal, steal from the best. Beyond being just good looking, it's also highly functional. The screens are crisp and responsive, with a great looking and intuitive UI. One feature I found pretty fun was the little image of the GA8 here on the center screen. If you tap it, it allows you to control a bunch of the car's functions like opening and closing the sunroof and side windows, as well as adjusting the side mirrors. Is it necessary? Absolutely not, but it is pretty fun. I think the only downside to offering an interior that mimics the design and functionality of a much more expensive car is that you inevitably have to make compromises in terms of materials. This row of silver buttons here is perhaps the best example. While it looks quite nice, if you've ever sat inside a Mercedes-Benz and used its controls, you will know that they are miles apart in terms of quality. The Mercedes uses real aluminum, while this is clearly light, cheap plastic. It doesn't ruin the experience, but it is noticeable. Now that we're in the back seat, you can start to see another one of the GIA's highlights, and that is space copious acres of space. Legroom stretches to the horizon and back, and the seats are a delight. I'm an especially big fan of these airplane-style rear headrests with adjustable side boasters. This thing would make a great car for getting driven to and from work, or even having meetings. The center console flips down and is large enough to accommodate a laptop, which I know because my buddy and I sat here in the back seat while we wrote a majority of the script for this video. There are a few improvements that could be made like allowing for independent adjustment of the rear AC, but that's probably more than can be expected from a car this cheap. Speaking of price, the GA8 starts around $23,000, while this top-of-the-line model comes at around $33,000, which is ridiculous value in my opinion. Now let's get her on the road and see what kind of driving dynamics you get for that price. But first, the all-important power specs. The entire G8 lineup comes equipped with a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder, putting 252 horsepower and about 290 foot-pounds of torque through a 6-speed ASIN transmission. The resulting 0-60 to 60 is an adequate, if not thrilling, 10 seconds. But uh, at this point, you've probably guessed that high performance is not on the G8's to-do list. I've seen a lot of reviewers compare this car to the Toyota Camry or Honda Accord, but I think a more apt comparison 
is the Toyota Avalon from the US market. This is a car built to creamily float over imperfections in the road while keeping its passengers separated from the outside world. If that is indeed its mission, it is a roaring success. This thing goes over road imperfections, speed bumps, that type of thing, um, better than some cars that cost twice as much. The only way you can break that beautiful silence is by flat footing the accelerator pedal. That way you can actually hear the little two liter up front rev out. It's not a melodic engine, but that doesn't really matter because you almost never hear it. The Ace and six-speed transmission is a bit of an oddity in a world of seven-speed DCTs and eight, nine, and 10-speed automatics, but it does its job well enough. There's a sport mode, but I have really never felt the need to use it. That's also the reason that I am not gonna talk to you that much about the handling of this car. It, you know, suffice it to say, is stable in the corners and maybe has a little bit less body roll than you might even expect. As Chinese-US trade relations have continued to deteriorate, the window of opportunity for Chinese automakers to enter the US market is quickly closing, if it hasn't already been firmly shut. You see, in the past, foreign automakers entered the US market as imports, without needing to first build local factories. But that won't work for Chinese automakers anymore. Thanks to all the tensions about US-Chinese trade imbalances, the only chance they have is to start building cars inside the United States, which requires a much bigger investment. But putting aside geopolitics for a moment, how would the GA8 fare against the competition in America? Well, I think that Guangxi is right to focus on an SUV heavy lineup if they do ever enter the US market. But if those models offer anything close to the quality and value that's on display here, I think they have a real chance of winning over a lot of buyers. Now we just have to wait and see if they ever make it. Thanks for watching.